I'm getting a call. I have to get this, and we'll, we'll touch base on that. Have Big it. boss here. Your mission is to infiltrate. Be careful not to let enemy detect you. But what if truck are to move? Boss? Boss. <laughs> Continue. What happens if I press continue? Look, the cursor's a gun. Oh, wow. You really got to pay attention here. Uh, welcome back to Watson. James, don't play. My name is James. I'm still Watson. And the, this title screen just will not wait for me. It's like, no, no, it's, no, it's we, ready to go. And I'm gonna, you should be too. I'm going to throw, throw you into the demo. I said, okay. Ultra Games presents. If you're wondering why this doesn't look like Majora's Mask, that's because it isn't. It's Metal Gear. And I, I see why those games get confu confused sometimes. They're very similar. They're very, I'm getting a call. Hang on. Everybody stop talking. Everybody shut up. We're getting a call on the transceiver. Big Boss speaking. Operation Intrude in 313. Uh, computer play 3D... 3D, 3D, 3D. You are to infiltrate the enemy fortress, Outer Heaven, then destroy their final weapon, Metal Gear. We're going to destroy Heaven? Yeah. First attempt to contact missing our gray fox. That's not a sentence. First then mission, kill God. <laughs> then try to find the metal gear. <laughs> Use frequency, this one, for all communication with me, over. And then it starts sirening. It's awful. Well, all right. Horrible sound. Let's go. What am I, what can I do? All right, A doesn't do anything. What's B do? Punch. Punch. All right. Off to a great start. They really gave me nothing to work with nope. here. What's going on here? Are you gonna... I'm getting sleepy. Oh, okay. And... Shouldn't he... have fallen asleep, butthole. You punched him into dissipating. I did. All right. <laughs> so this part, I played this a little bit last night to, to prepare for the role. Oh, yeah, okay. So you did a, did a little research. And I'm real... I'm pretty good at getting through here, right? You should let those sleeping dogs lie. I would have, but see how I got around them? I found the, the ideal path. Yeah, you did it. Yeah. I think there's going to be a steep cliff where you you haven't played the game and won't be as good, but that'll be fun. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that'll be fun when we get there. You're going to see a lot of green. You're not going to see a lot of, like, interior building because of that kind of shit. <laughs> I go in here. I get the binoculars that do something. I have located binoculars. He really nailed that it. to himself. They really nailed it on the localization. This guy's just like, hey, where'd you come from? Came from my fist. I just popped out of a truck. Mother liquor. You probably stole our binoculars. Oh, oh, oh. So this was a, a obviously an NES game. So what? It wasn't clearly apparent to you. This isn't PS5? And I liked it when I was a kid because you kind of... You couldn't just go in guns a-blazing because you didn't have any guns. Oh, shit. Well, that is kind of the appeal of these games in general, right? The... The strategy component. Yeah. I mean, you kind of got to plan out your next move, plan, ration your ammo, once you do get a weapon, that kind of thing. Right. Because eventually you get a weapon. You find ammo before you get a weapon, though. Why so sleepy in these games? All right. <laughs> He'll wake up and go, I fell asleep. Yeah, no shit. Your lucky I boss wasn't around. I go that way next time. I can't. No. I tried to. No. I've tried to previously. You can't get by the Jeep. Punch, punch him. Punch the dog. Punch this dog. <laughs> See, that's a lot better than that one. Yeah, game that's a lot, lot better. More tasteful, I think. Yeah, right. Punch him three times. And he disappears. He's done. Um, you Everybody know, knows what happened. It's very sad. We don't need it shoved in our face. These yeah. guards fall asleep standing up. It's hilarious. Yeah, I know. So when you get game over in this game, you, you get to keep your shit at least. Ah, oh, fuck. Uh-oh. A lot of that. Uh-oh. Oh! Uh-oh. Uh All right. I don't like it. I don't so like once it. you go from board to board, the guys reset. I'm seeing that. So it's a little it's a little bit forgiving in that sense. Yeah, you kind of got your own little save state. <laughs> yeah, I tried to do that. We may or may not be playing. We're playing this any way that we can right now. Yeah. We're just going to say that. We're just working on it. Save states are an option. I tried to get a save state rolling so that way we don't just see green over and over again. I couldn't figure it out. You got this. Go punch that guy. All right. I'm Wait till he turns around. I'm scared. Wait till he turns all the way around. All right. Now's the time. Punch. And now, yeah, do that to the next guy. And wait for this guy to look yeah. up. So there was one game that I wanted to play that I thought was a go, different... Go, 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 go. I thought, oh, shit. Yeah, see, it's... It, yeah, you'll have to wait again. It's a very, very tiny slot I got to get through there. Mm -hmm. Just like real life. hey yo, Get him. All right, he, he got me, but that's all right. I he got him. He tagged you up, but I you got finished him more. It. The good. game that I wanted to play 
I was mistaken on what kind of game it was. Oh, like a Leisure Suit Larry type thing? So when Willow came out... <laughs> no, nothing like that. Uh, when Willow came out, the movie Willow... Leisure Suit Willow. I'm familiar with Warwick Davis's role, yeah. Yeah, you know about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There were some video games to go along with it. And one of the games came out in arcade, and that is awesome. It's a side-scroller platform. You start out playing Willow. Eventually, you get to play as Mad Mardigan. And it's super cool. It's super action-y. It's nothing like the movie, right? Sure, sure. It's just a, It's an awesome platformer that someone designed. And they right. said, now make it Willow. They, they yeah, they used to be a lot more... Uh, loose, we'll say, with the uh, properties. Right. Which I'm fine with. A good game is right, a good yeah. game. I could care less if it... I, uh, some of the worst games are the ones that would just cycle through the story for you. You know? And try to force a game to fit the movie's structure. Those are some of the worst games. Yeah. They kind of did that with the NES version of Willow. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> they look... Were, uh, don't shoot me! Don't shoot me! Don't shoot me! I gotta go! I get in the truck and I go, I guess he's gone. Uh-oh, the truck have started to move. Wait, what? The truck have started to move. Got it. I mean, what's so hard about it? So Willow comes Perfect out. Perfect grammar. Willow comes out on NES and it's kind of a Zelda clone. Okay. It's fun. It's a good game. Yeah, yeah. It is crazy hard. Like, Metal Gear is hard, but it's not unbeatable, you know? I get the sense with this that it just takes patience yep. more than anything else. It's going to be some repetition, but if you're patient, you'll kind of learn it by trial and error. I found some rations. So there's all my stuff. You go here, you got binoculars. the car. Binoculars. Binoculars. Cigarettes. <laughs> yeah, we have smokes can and rations. Smoke? Can we smoke? I can equip them. Equip them. I can equip the cigarettes. For maximum cool factor. I guess. I tried to equip. Yep, there they are. See that? Now, awesome. <laughs> now I have cigarettes. This episode brought to you by smoking. Are you smoking yet? Not now, Ted. Smoke. <laughs> Come on, go through, go through! Why can't I go through? You gotta punch that guy first, right? He's trying to run away. He's like, oh man, that guy punched me, I gotta go. Oh, that guy's badass, he's got cigarettes. <laughs> no, I have a, I thought I had a, maybe I have to equip do it. Do a key? I have a key, Card it's right one. there. Maybe that's cigarettes what I gotta do. Cigarettes aren't a key, James. Let me through. Come, come on. Come on. You come on. Are, you guys are being dicks. Punch, punch, punch. This is supposed to work. Uh-oh. All right. All right, well, let's go back over here and see what happens. See, we'll reset the board. To find, yeah. Uh-oh, the truck have started to move. <laughs> uh, this is delightful. Bro, I think there's something wrong with your alignment. You should really get that checked out. Then I gotta get back in here real quick because they saw me. Uh-oh, the truck have started to move. <laughs> it's a good thing I got cigarettes, because that's all I need. Yeah, they'll help with your nausea. What's your rank? I don't know, star? Star is my rank. I'm like a star. Is that good enough for you? Star dash dash cigarettes. Oh, I think I know why I couldn't get to the door because they saw me. Probably. Yeah. They're, they're like, lock it. He's here. There's a dude. Oh, yeah. Okay. Go, 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 go. Okay. What the hell's happening? Are you kidding? Equ equip the card instead of the cigarettes. Right. That's definitely the thing that I should do, right? It's the only thing I can think of. So yeah, they're equipped. So as far as I know, but bino coolers aren't gonna help you get. <laughs> no, huh? Card one is equipped. Oh, yeah. See now when he leaves. That was cool. It's a guard change in an NES game. I mean, look, they put some thought into this. Oh yeah, they they did what they could. You know, did you ever play Metal Gear Solid on PlayStation One? Was that a thing for you? I, I didn't play a ton of it. I had a couple of friends who played it a lot, yeah. so I was around it, but I never really got sucked into it. When I when I first moved out, I'm 18, 19 years old. I had a GameCube at the time. This is kind of aging myself a little bit, but that's how old I was whenever GameCube was out, and I had like my own place and my own job and all that. Sure, sure. Um, oh, should I do that? Is that a good idea? Yeah, I'm all right. It feels like an okay idea. I picked up Metal Gear Solid The Twin Snakes. Go ahead it and was, equip your cigarettes again. <laughs> it was a, uh, you can see like laser beams with your cigarettes equipped. Nice. Something like that. The smoke lights them up. I Yeah, I know there is an actual function. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I picked up Twin Snakes for GameCube. Turns out that just ended up being a rare game. Huh. At the time, I paid 20 bucks for it because it was out and it was used. It was just a used game. It's weird to kind of think about games like that because at, at one time, you could go buy a game for GameCube or whatever and it was used and you'd pay... Let's say for a Zelda game, you'd pay 30 bucks for a used copy of it. Sure. No biggie, you know? Yeah. I think Twin Snakes... You're looking at you're looking at a Benjamin on eBay right now. For a copy of Twin Snakes on GameCube. Easy. 
Well, you got to remember though, they didn't make a lot of porn games for GameCube. <laughs> Not many. They made some. Uh, Custer's Custer's uh, last stand was actually on Atari. I don't know if you knew that or not. Interesting. Are you familiar with the porn games on Atari? No, I I know they exist, but that that was a little before my time, and I don't know anybody who like you know really has knowledge of them anymore. I know about them. I know kind of how they happened. Well, I don't know how they happened. I know how they happened. Horny <laughs> developers. <laughs> right. That's exactly how they happened. I'm getting a call. I'm getting a call. I have to get this, and we'll we'll touch base on that. Have Big it. boss here. Your mission is to infiltrate. Be careful not to let enemy detect you. But what if truck are to move? Boss? Boss. Boss, truck have started to move. What do I do? Truck have started moving. Uh, boss, over, copy, truck moving, have started to. Am having strong. You deer to kill a, kill a dare's deer in the king's forest? I think you mixed it up a little bit there. A little, a little bit. I do not know what I was talking about. Uh-oh. What was I saying? Porn games on Atari. It's very important. Yeah, come on now. No, Let's uh -uh. focus. We're talking about on this. porn games on Atari. I think I'm gonna die here. Yeah. Oh, you are most definitely gonna. Oh, where's the dudes coming from? Go, come go, on, go. come on. I'm safe. Hell yeah. This guy's like, nothing's gonna happen, man. It's my last day. The weekend is coming. I have Atari porn games to look forward to. You had to ask for them, right. obviously. You go right. to the so who did you ask? <laughs> I didn't ask anybody. Dear Atari, <laughs> if you could make porn games, that'd be swell. Yeah, so one of them that I know of was Custard's Last Stand. And you play Custard, and you're, you're trying to get to the woman on the other side of the screen. Was it Custard because you were looking for the D? Kind of. Instead of Custard. I got it. Custard's <laughs> Last Stand? Custard's Last Stand? My name's Custard. You all got that D? Because I do. Hell yeah. You had to get to the Native American woman that was tied oh, to... I don't like that. I don't like it either. You had... It was tied to a cactus, and then Custard would have his way with her, and I'm like, this is fucked up. Even by, like, early... Late 70s, early 80s, this is fucked up that someone said, yeah, this is good. Sell it. I'm good with this. I mean, sell it. Why not? Sell it. Oh, no. Yeah. Oh, no. They just keep filing in God, on you. God, they come out of nowhere. They're just ready to go. This place is extremely well staffed. All right, so let's. Anyway, you had to ask for them, and they came from behind the counter in like this leather, unlabeled case. Ooh, leather. Because it was sexy. Or something. I just. It always amazes me, back, like back then, how you kind of had to to know what you were after in those situations yeah. to even stumble across it. You had to kind of. It was all very secretive, you know. You had to get a password, you had to know a guy, you gotta go to the place where it is, and then ask in a certain way, and then maybe they'd give you a little leather thing, and it would have it in there. Have we talked about the... What killed me? What the hell? No, oh, I died here last night. Yeah. Okay, so this is about as far as we're going to get. We gotta start over now. Alright. That's cool. Have we talked about... The... We've talked about the basement video store that existed in my hometown when I was a kid. Multiple times. It's We've... kind of all you talk about. Have we talked about the, the secret cabinet with the porn in it? Yeah. All right, cool. Yeah. So, yeah. All right, we had that. We then. know the porn cabinet. That's people, where I... people know porn cabinets or uh, behind a beaded curtain in general. Andy's had the beaded curtain. That's where I first saw Custard's last stand on the Atari. <laughs> See, had... they had games too. I didn't know that. Yeah, they they rented out games. I'd rent out. Now play. that's a new wrinkle to the basement video store story. Oh yeah, you could rent an I entire. Didn't I didn't know they had the games. You could like rent naughty games. You could rent a naughty game along with your entire Atari to play the naughty game. So you could rent the Atari for like 12 bucks for five days, right? So if you saw like a 45-year-old dude renting an Atari, you kind of knew why he was doing it? It came in this shitty plastic suitcase. Oh, sure. sure. It was super weird. My grandpa would rent me a whole Super Nintendo with like a copy of Donkey Kong Country. Like renting a slide projector. <laughs> and, that's all I would, and that's all I would play for the next seven days. Hell yeah. I'd be in front of his TV. I am focused, bro. I gotta beat this game, and I never did because I was, was bad at video games, and I still kind of am. All right, but well, while you don't focus on Metal Gear here, <laughs> right? <laughs> what have you been hot to talk about this week? Ooh, oh, dude, I've been really excited about this, and I didn't even know it came out till over the weekend. I guess it's been out for since November first, and it's a movie, a little movie called Weird: The Al Yankovic Story. You want to talk about things that kind of shaped my humor yeah they're right in your, this is right in your wheelhouse yeah i am 
about some Weird Al, and I still am. Anytime he comes out with new stuff, I'm just like, yeah, I'll listen to it. I'm sure it's great. Even if it's not necessarily like my cup of tea. Uh, Foil, his parody of Royals by Lord. I liked it. It's fine. I liked it. Word Crimes. As much as I liked the song Royals, right. you know what I mean? In the sense that I could recognize a pop song. I liked them, and I can respect them, but I'm not nostalgic for them because I was already a, I was already a whole person when those came out. Came right, out. right. I'm nostalgic for things like uh, Beat It, his parody of Eat It. Uh, White and Nerdy. White and Nerdy, absolutely. Amish Paradise. His, Amish Paradise is such a banger. His song that he didn't... So good. He didn't really get approval for, but he kind of did. So I think, the, I think the story of that is that he reached out to Coolio and said, I want to do a parody of Gangster's Paradise. And he said, absolutely not. And he says, cool, I'm going to do it anyway. And that's pretty much the gist of it. From what I understand, though, is that I think Coolio eventually kind of walked it back and said that whoever told him about the parody didn't explain it very well or didn't didn't give him all the information. Absolutely. So when he passed on it, he didn't necessarily know what he was passing on. I don't know. That's it's cha- the story's changed a lot over the years. I think he. Kinda- it's always used to illustrate that Weird Al is a good dude who tends to reach out as a courtesy at least yeah he's under no legal obligation to reach out to anyone to parody their songs not really well i know like for instance he didn't parody uh paul mccartney's because he was gonna do chicken pot pie yeah and paul mccartney's vegetarian so he's like could you not do live and let die as chicken pot pie and he was like yeah that's fine and he's and weird al being a courteous guy follow so that's more what i would imagine it's like weird al is a class act and he works clean those are two things that are known about Weird Al. So, he, yeah, he doesn't legally have to get permission to well, parody someone's song, but he's probably going to. Because why not? It's also well documented that, you know, he dated Madonna throughout the 80s. Right. He may or may not have been involved with Pablo Escobar. He was a raging alcoholic at one point. Well, allegedly. Allegedly. Well, I mean, look, I understand the, bio t- uh, the, the, the biopic Weird, the Al Yankovic story, did take some liberties Where? With, with his story. But he was, you know, he was super into drugs. I do remember his parents specifically saying to give up on what he enjoyed doing. I remember that. Yeah, that was part of the movie. He talks about it a lot in interviews. Yeah. So, yeah, on the whole, I think they got it pretty correct. I do know there's a story where Weird Al's father actually beat the accordion salesman to a a pulp, right? Mm -hmm. Just really Mm -hmm. tore into this guy. They got that right in the movie. Yeah, nailed it. Really nailed it. Uh, dead, dead ringer for Frank Sinatra. <laughs> it's actually super weird because the accordion salesman was somehow the guy from Reno 911. That was also the accordion salesman. So it's crazy that they actually managed to capture that footage in oh, real that's time. What, that's what Thomas Lennon used to do before Reno 911? Yeah, he sold accordions door to door. Huh. And that's where we all got his first accordion. You learn something new every day. Yeah. So the, the movie really got a whole a lot of things right. If we sound... Like we're doing a bit, it's because we're doing a bit, and we got a little too committed there. <laughs> it's all, it's all bit. It's all a bit. Every last bit of it. Ha! I really liked the movie. I, I did too. I thought it was a lot of fun. I wonder. I kind of want to know cameos. I liked that they had fun with it. I liked where they kind of subverted things, you know, yes. and just kind of put it all in there. It made a really fun, like, kind of stew of a movie. I love you know that. I mean, it's a little. It was an action movie for a hot five. Minutes. For a little bit, yeah, and a pretty good one too. And it was like enough that you go, huh? That's what they would do in an action movie. Like somebody choreographed this fight sequence. <laughs> This room must electrocute me or something. I don't know. I get there and I die. Yeah, you got a terminal case of the stupids. What a dumb dumb. So I'm going to keep doing it because uh, yeah, I've been Work saying. your way back there, Corporal. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting sleepy. No, you got, you went to sleep too soon. Oh, geez, I got to tiptoe now. All right, so we're playing this like army game, right? And I'm I'm remembering now how much I got kind of into Stanley Kubrick movies. Oh. Whenever I was a teenager, you know what I mean? Yeah. Just in the sense that, like, you hear, uh, these are the directors that you should watch, like, all their movies, and he's one of those that always gets thrown around, right? Do you say that in the same vein, like, I got really into Fight Club when I was kind of figuring out that I was a person and I could have feelings about stuff? I think when you're young and you're, yeah, kind of eager to define yourself, yeah, it's real easy to kind of latch onto those kind of things. Yeah. Sure, and sure. It's kind of cringy now. And yeah, you can be the Kubrick guy, you can be the Fight Club guy, you can, you know what I mean? You can be the MMA guy, you can be, you can have a lot of different 
things that become kind of your identity or whatever. I tried to be a lot of different guys when I was sure. growing up. You know, I was trying to fit in and I kind of pretended to be super into Fight Club for a little bit to kind of get to make friends, you know? It's a, yeah, it becomes kind of a, a common kind of reference point. Yeah. We you kind can, of, you can talk to people about it. And then, go, hey, I like that movie too. And then, anyway, whenever I went to college, I was like, oh no, I'm into Weird Al. I'm going to do Weird Al stuff. And I kind of doubled down on that. That's, and that's good. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't stick with the whole like edgy Fight Club thing for very long. But it was high school, you know. Yeah, if it doesn't totally resonate with you, then yeah, by all means. I was in high school and I was trying to survive. Right. Yeah. I mean, really. I don't know. I don't even think I knew enough to to pretend to be into stuff. Okay. <laughs> I don't think I was that smart. <laughs> I was just into what I was into. Oh, dude, no, I was. And then it was like, hey, how come I don't have a ton of friends? <laughs> I put on a fucking show. Yeah. Oh yeah. I, people were just like, "He's cool." No, he's not. But I'm glad you think so. Cuz that's kind of what I'm going for. I want you to like me. Yeah, it's got real for oh, a little bit there. Oh, James. I know, right? It's oh, fucked up. Now yeah. I don't care. Yeah, it's fine. I'm way I'm way over that. I don't I don't give a fuck anymore. You were just an angsty little guy though, weren't you? Oh yeah, super angsty. That's funny. Be my friend, please. I'll watch your stupid movie with Brad Pitt. So anyway, save it for AA. Uh, <laughs> we're talking about Kubrick. That's all I wanted. To, that's all I wanted. I don't want to go down. You can talk about Kubrick and AA James too. James Lane. God. If you bring up Kubrick and AA, they throw you out. They throw you right out. They said, um, no, you're fired from AA. <laughs> you're really bringing us you're down, not, bro. You're not allowed to come in here anymore. <laughs> all right. So tell me about Full Metal Jacket. So there was not a Nintendo game for it. Though there was not a Nintendo game for it, but we're playing this Nintendo Army game, so it's a good jumping off point to talk about how much I kinda don't like Full Metal Jacket. Oh, okay. That's honestly not what I was expecting. I thought you were gonna be like, This is my this is my movie, baby. Oh really? Yeah, I don't know. You you, you talked about it on before we started. And yeah. I didn't really know what to expect whenever you said you wanted to talk I about it. I hadn't watched it in a couple of years. I was expecting you to fawn over Stanley Kubrick a little bit. Well, that's what I was that's what I was saying before. So whenever you're kind of when you're going through a Kubrick phase initially, I think that's how a lot of people come to him. They kind of fawn all over him and go, Oh my god, look at all these masterpieces. He made all these different movies and all these different genres and he basically made like one of the best movies in every genre that he made. Blah 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 blah. It just goes on and on and on. And I do think he genuinely has obviously some some great movies yeah no one's saying he doesn't i really i lost a lot of love for for full metal jacket this time around i don't know just rub me the wrong way really give me some give me some reasons i want to know your reasons for this because uh, i'm sure you have some or are they kind of abstract it seemed you don't I, have to I don't have know a, it seemed pretty surface level to me i think it it's kind of one of those one of those movies that it's all very, very surface level. Yeah. You know? And I think it thinks it has more to say than it actually does have to say. <laughs> it kind of just didn't... Beyond the initial, oh my god, he's yelling at them and, you know, it's sure. not fun. <laughs> no. <laughs> beyond, like, that kind of, oh, isn't this performance fun? Oh, you know yeah, I mean? sure. I gotcha. That kind of thing. Because who doesn't like watching Arlie Ermey deliver some of those lines? That's great. Yeah, the classics. Real good quality insults. You can still hurl at your best friend. We can't say them here. I don't want to repeat but them. But beyond that, yeah, it's mostly just either homophobic jokes, sexist jokes, weird misogyny all the time. Maybe things that are inaccurate. I think the only women that are portrayed in the movie are literal prostitutes. Like that kind of stuff that just bums you out, you know? Yeah. Maybe that was the goal, though. I mean, there might oh, be some... no, I mean, every single... Every single frame is intentional. Like, it's a Stanley Kubrick movie, for God's sakes. <laughs> Stanley but, Kubrick does not want you to leave his movies feeling good about yourself. Ever. I don't recall watching any of his movies feeling okay about me afterwards. It just felt yeah, weird. Doctor and... Love is okay. It's, it's pretty much just a farce. That's true. Okay. That's a good point. But... Yeah, but, I mean, you're not supposed to feel good at the end of The Shining. That's it changed the ending to make it bleaker, you know. He's like, "Oh, that's a good ending, Stephen." Lolita gives everybody the creeps. Yeah, <laughs> eyes wide shut kind of gives you the creeps. I never saw it. Eyes wide shut. I never seen it. It's 
Again, it just it feels like it's not saying that much. Who was in that movie? Tom Cruise. That's Tom Cruise and Nicole Kidman. Nicole Kidman. I remember the masks. Yeah. yeah. I remember I wasn't allowed to watch it. You know, <laughs> like when it came out, mom was like, "Don't watch that." All right. You know what? If you want, if you don't want to watch um, Eyes Wide Shut, that's fine. Just uh, just watch the episode Unicorn in Captivity of the Venture Brothers. It's a parody. Oh, that's pretty much it. And it's pretty fun. All right, cool. I'll yeah. do that. Yeah. I'll rewatch that. Do that instead. Instead of watching much, Eyes Wide Shut. Much better use of your time. You can watch The Ninth Gate, too, with Johnny Depp. Do you have any of those movies, <laughs> though? Um, any of those kind of movies where maybe you liked them or were okay with them or however you felt about them, and then you watched them much later and you... You know, had a dramatic shift. We already mentioned it, but yeah, Fight Club's the big one for me. Well, sure, I mean Fight Club, but beyond that, like, any other ones that come to mind? No, no, that's the one that really I kind of I kind of take issue with. It made me, it, yeah. I feel kind of dirty whenever I think about it now. I, I don't think, like that. I don't like the person that I tried to be when mm. when I was talking about the movie with my so called friends. Good, I think that's a good way of putting it. Is it is it. It definitely brought out some things in people that's not not fun, and, and I don't think that's necessarily the movie or the book's fault. Um, but it's kind of one of those things where maybe overall it did a little more harm than good. You know what's funny is that there is a movie that fixed me, and we'll talk about that it, real um, quick. We still have some time left. It's an American Psycho. Yeah, that what fixed you? Yeah, that's what fixed me. I was like, okay, I'm not, this isn't cool. Oh, it's cool to be dead inside and totally blank. No, I, too, am wearing a razor-thin mask that will slip at any moment and cause me to go into a fit of homicidal rage. It's just like me. Yeah. I was like, all right, I need to right? tone it. I kind of need to tone it down. Right, you guys? And what's funny is that because of that, I can go back and watch American Psycho and really enjoy it because for what it is. I and I can enjoy Fight Club to a certain extent because it is... A well-made movie that's well acted and does have some cool things to say about toxic masculinity. Oh yeah, no, it's very cool. It just happens to really, really resonate with like the douchiest douches that ever douched, you know? Pretty much. And that just, it's like Rick and Morty, it's just ruined. When I grew up a little bit and I, I looked back on the people that I wanted to be around because of Fight Club, I went, I can never watch this movie yeah, those again. aren't good people. No, these are not people I want to be around. No. And I'm pretty sure the movie was talking about you. Me? You know what I mean? Me? Like, no, not no. you. <laughs> I was about like, wow. the people about the people that maybe I shouldn't have spent time with. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I got you. Oh, side note, I'm not I'm not a less dramatic. Uh, side sidebar. We're gonna sidebar real quick. <laughs> put a pin in the sidebar. Your Honor, we're gonna need a sidebar. Your Honor, I did convince someone in high school that there was a twist to that movie, but that the that there was a different twist than there actually is. Because <laughs> it was one of those things where I had seen the movie, this person had not seen the movie, and they were like, "But I know there's a twist." That's pretty funny. And I was like, yeah, the twist is Brad Pitt's character is a robot. And like, I was just like, there, that's it. That's the twist. Now you know. So, yeah. They still got to enjoy a good twist. Right. I feel like. What a twist. Because they are were some, expecting robots. What are some movies with some decent twists? And, of course, the first thing that comes to mind, since we still got a couple minutes left, um, I guess the twist, there was a twist in American Psycho. Kind do we want to say twist, or do we want to just say like climax or big reveal or something like that? Because twist to me, it, it makes it seem like it shifts the whole movie, and I don't think it necessarily has to shift the whole movie like Sixth Sense style. Right, and that's always the, the M Night Shyamalan. That's the go-to example, sure. He says like, "What a twist!" Yeah, yeah I guess I remember the robot chicken bits. Yeah, yeah. what a twist! Yeah, I remember. They, they they did those to death, and they're great. Uh oh, uh oh, this is bad. Punch! 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 I like the sleepaway camp twist. I don't know about that twist. That's a genuine twist. I've never seen that movie. I've seen, I haven't seen a lot of movies. You man. don't know that movie? No, uh huh. Everybody, watch sleepaway camp. I'm gonna make James watch it. Um, I'm also gonna make him watch Crimes of the Future because he still hasn't watched Crimes of the Future. What else do I need to make you watch for your homework? Is oh. there something else that I, that we were talking about? Probably. Probably. There are so many movies that I that I need to see. Last you know? I checked, Sleepaway Camp's on Prime. I may not not be correct about that anymore. It may not be on there anymore. It'll, I can find it somewhere. Oh, it's... That movie's bonkers. Dude, bonkers. I did something bad, and we're gonna... It's confession time. Baby did a bad, bad as, thing. As we, as we near the end of the program, it's now confession time. Gather around, kids. I'm, I created an email... Just so I could have another trial for Paramount Plus. Fantastic. 
I just I just made one up. That's like half the reason our podcast even has a Gmail account is because I now use it for that kind of thing. Really? Yeah. You just do it for trials and things like that? Mostly, yeah. I, I was proud of myself, though, because I remembered to cancel it on the sixth day. It's Watson James. Don't play at gmail.com. <laughs> I knew what he was getting at. Yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't let him do it. Nailed it. Uh, I, I, used a fa- I made a fake email. I got a subscription to Paramount+. Plus. It's not a fake email. It's a, re- <laughs> it's a real email. It is a real email, but I made it with the intention. It was not my, yeah, yeah. my, my normal email. I made it with the intention of using it as a free trial tool. And I used that because I really wanted to watch Event Horizon. I love Event Horizon. And it's streaming on Paramount+. Plus. I fell asleep about an hour into it. I don't know what's wrong with me. Why do I fall asleep during horror movies? Like movies that are supposed to like kind of make you feel on edge. Maybe uh, it's because I've seen it so many times that I'm just... Yeah, I'm not yeah. watching it to be scared anymore. I'm watching it to see Sam Neill pluck his eyeballs out. You know, I've never really watched horror movies to be scared. No. No. I play horror games now to be scared, and I am left wanting. They're a bummer. Not many horror games that are decent anymore. Well, now that we're past Halloween, I'm not really reading horror books much. Um, I'm back back balls deep in the Dune saga. Oh, yeah? Reading, reading God Emperor. That's a good one. We're going to have to touch. That's going to be a whole other show, though. That's a whole other thing. We'll have to get there next time. But yeah, watch Crimes of the Future. Watch Event Horizon. That's a great one. Watch that Venture Brothers episode that I was telling you about. It's in season seven. If you're familiar with the show, it's Unicorn in Captivity. Sorry we didn't make any progress, but this game's hard. But we showed off this game, this one specific section of this game. (laughs) Hope you liked it. Speaking of which, this room does look a lot like the room that Private Pile shoots himself in (laughs) in Full Metal Jacket. (laughs) Jesus Christ. Goodbye.